They say that necessity is the mother of invention, and this was very necessary. I'm Tempest, and welcome to Time with Tempest, where today we're going to be talking about some of the most insane inventions created or perfected during the American Revolution. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel to see what hidden history I uncover next. Now, let's begin our story. The Revolutionary War was a war fought between the 13 colonies and Britain from 1775 to 1783 in order to gain independence as a new nation. To fight such a significant war, both sides would need to use the latest technology and even invent their own to have any sort of advantage. Luckily, this was the Age of Enlightenment. Great minds were making even greater leaps in scientific discovery than ever before. Advancement in war, espionage, health, and even paperwork were all crucial to victory. And the people during the Revolutionary War did not disappoint. I mean, does this look disappointing to you? Say hello to the Turtle, the world's first military submarine. Built in 1775 by David Bushnell, who was an inventor from Connecticut with a penchant for gunpowder and underwater combat. You see, he was the first person to prove that gunpowder could explode underwater and began to experiment with devices that could aid the war. The Turtle was invented for this very purpose. It was an individually operated submersible that was meant to attach explosives to the hull of a British ship. It was propelled using what many described as the arms of a windmill moving backwards and forwards, which had never before been used on a watercraft. Utilizing the propellers, a bilge tank, and a hand pump, it could move in all directions, had a speed of three miles per hour, and had enough air for 30 minutes. The instruments inside had bioluminescent fungus painted on them so the operator could see in the dark. Sadly, the turtle did not get a chance to truly shine, as during its first mission, the operator started to become disoriented from the buildup of carbon monoxide and found himself unable to attach a mine to the British ship Eagle. After that, the British invaded New York City, where the turtle was moored, and thus, it had to be destroyed. There were rumors that Bushnell saved the turtle, but to this day, we don't know where it is. This is one of several replicas, but unlike almost all the others, this one actually works and was even tested in the Connecticut River. There was also another functional replica, which was used in the incredible AMC show, Turn Washington Spies. Even though the turtle's mission was a failure, it revolutionized war. Underwater combat had never previously been explored, and after his invention, for better or for worse, it set a precedence. Now that we've covered offense, let's talk defense, specifically inoculation. While inoculation had already been invented, it was in its heyday during the Revolutionary War thanks to General George Washington. He implemented the first mass military inoculation to great success. Having already had smallpox when he was young, he knew the devastating effects of the disease. Many British troops were already immune like him, having already survived it. However, only some of the various troops that made up Washington's army had immunity, and it's estimated that over 90% of deaths in the Continental Army were caused by disease. So doctors, armed with scabs and pus from those suffering with a mild form of smallpox, set about to do their work. The quickest way to inoculate was to contaminate a needle with smallpox material like the scabs and pus, then insert the needle into the soldier's flesh, giving them a mild dose of smallpox from which they would usually recover. However, if the patient is in delicate health, too young, or the procedure is done improperly, it can have disastrous consequences. Two of King George III's young sons died within six months of each other, each from smallpox inoculations. Regardless, the risk of smallpox inoculation was preferable to the highly contagious and deadly smallpox, and without inoculation, America would have never won the war. And the advances made in the 18th century paved the way for vaccines, including the smallpox vaccine, 
which eradicated the disease in the 1970s. Let's lighten things up with the next invention, shall we? Introducing the swivel chair. Created by none other than that wacky, enigmatic man of the Enlightenment, Thomas Jefferson. The man that personally answered the door to the White House in his pajamas. The man who ate a tomato, considered poisonous at the time, in front of dinner guests just for the lols. The man who sent a taxidermied moose to France after a French naturalist dissed America, saying their animals were smaller than France. If you couldn't already tell, Dude had a lot going on in his life, and probably had a lot of paperwork. Constantly turning in your stationary seat to reach documents was tiring, especially when you're writing something rather important. Thus, he came up with a brilliant idea. What if his chair could move 360 degrees? So, in 1776, in Philadelphia, he modified a Windsor chair using an iron spindle and four rollers made of window sash pulleys, which allowed him a full range of movement while seated. This new invention enabled him to work more efficiently, something that was desperately needed at the time. Because at that time, Thomas Jefferson was writing something very important. The Declaration of Independence. That's right, America's most important document was written in between writer's block-induced swivel spins. And this very chair can still be seen today at the American Philosophical Society Museum in Philadelphia. So go ahead, history heroes, take a spin in your chair right now. And if your teacher or boss yells at you, just tell them you're hurling through history. Now, let's learn about our final inventions, all to do with... Spycraft. While there were many advances in spycraft during this period in history, one is quite significant and the other, well, it was invented at a much earlier time and while there are no written records of its use, anything's possible. And it's too awesome not to talk about. Starting with our first espionage invention, we have invisible ink. Though different variations of invisible ink were used well before the war, this particular kind was very unique. This invisible ink was invented by Sir James Jay, brother of, yes, that John Jay. James Jay created two liquids, one to write with and one to reveal the writing. These formulas were so secretive, we still don't know what they were made of. What we do know is he began acting as a spy himself, writing to his brother in America and informing him of plans in England to force the colonies into submission. Though to anyone reading the letters, they would appear as friendly, even harmless correspondence. But just below his parting words, he would write in his solution, and John Jay would reveal his hidden words with the solution on his end. This solution was especially important to the Culper spy ring, a patriot spy ring formed in 1778, which was crucial to the success of the Revolutionary War. Side note, one of my favorite shows of all time is Turn Washington Spies, and it is all about the Culper spy ring. It succeeds where other shows have failed, humanizing history and connecting viewers to people that made the revolution so revolutionary. So go check it out. It is currently available on Netflix and is totally binge-worthy. Anyway, the Culper spy ring operated out of New York and Connecticut, with ordinary men and women acting as spies in a highly organized operation. They utilized techniques such as dead drops, coded messages in newspapers, invisible ink, ciphers, and more. In fact, their cipher is still in existence today and is in the possession of the Library of Congress. They successfully uncovered several plots by the British, such as assassination attempts on General Washington, attacking General Rochambeau's forces as soon as they arrived in Rhode Island from France, planting counterfeit continental currency, making them worthless, and perhaps, most famously, uncovering Benedict Arnold as a traitor. This ring was so secretive, not only do we not know what the invisible ink is made of, but we only found out the identities of some of the members in the 1930s. Then, in the 1950s, another member was identified. And still today, there are unknown members, like Agent 355, a woman thought to have a critical role in uncovering Benedict Arnold as a traitor. Invisible Ink was critical to their activities and was probably their main source of passing information along. And Sir James Jay's invention was the key to their success. 
Other invisible inks, like lemon juice, are invisible to the naked eye, but when exposed to a heat source like a fireplace, reveal whatever secrets were written. But even with Jay's incredible invention, they may have employed even stranger techniques. As depicted in Turn Washington Spies, eggs can be used to send secret messages. This technique was invented in the 16th century by scientist and scholar Giovanni della Porta for the purposes of smuggling messages to his allies in prison during the Spanish Inquisition. And while there's no written record of the culper spy ring using this technique, anything's possible with that sneaky bunch. Let's see how it's done. All of these insane inventions were born or perfected out of necessity during the Revolutionary War. The creativity and innovation people presented when their backs were up against the wall was astounding and sometimes entertaining. So the next time you see a submarine or take a spin in a swivel chair, make sure to remember the revolutionary people that came before you. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please remember to subscribe distribute your delight, or leave your calling card in the comments below because the YouTube algorithm gods demand it. Until next time, stay curious, history heroes.